little talker. You can live your whole life out somewhere between Goose Island and Bronzeville without once feeling that the week after you move, the neighbors are going to miss your place. For it isn't so much a city as it is a vast way station where three and a half million bipeds swarm with a single cry. One side or a leg off, I'm getting mine. It's every man for himself in this tired air. Well, yet once you come to be part of this particular patch, you'll never love another. It's like loving a woman with a broken nose. You may well find lovelier lovelies, but never a lovely so real. And Jane Addams knew too that Chicago's blood was hustler's blood. Knowing that Chicago forever has two faces, one for winners and one for losers, one for hustlers and one for squares, one for the open-eyed children of a thousand windowed office buildings, and one for the shuttered hours, one for the sunlit traffic's noontime bustle, and one for the midnight subway watches, where stations swing past like ferris wheels of light, yet leave the moving window wet with rain or tears. One face for the go-getters, and one for the go-get-it-yourselfers. One for the poets, and one for performers. One for the good boy, and one for the bad. One for white collars as well as the blue. Our museums like cathedrals, our cathedrals like museums. For the windy white and the blue. Miles of beach of Saturday moonlight too. To Michigan City afternoons at the zoo. Washington mists of sunlight. One for early riders and one for evening hiders. One for the White Sox and none for the Cubs. <laughs> one for King Oliver and Louis Armstrong. Improvising half an hour at the old Lincoln bandstand. For baby Dodds and Dave Tuff, and all the other real gun centers gone too soon. That brought jazz up the rivers from New Orleans, made it Chicago's music, and then the world scene. For the soldiers and the sailors and the far from home Marines, it doesn't matter where you're from. For our white lit asylums, our dark wall courtrooms, overheated district stations, disinfected charity boards where the sunlight's always soiled, and there are no holiday hours. For hospitals, brothels, and prisons, and such hell, where patronage comes up softly like the flower that you smell. It isn't hard to love a city for its greater and its lesser towers, its pleasant parks or its flashy ballet, 
or for its broad and bending boulevards where the continuous headlights follow, one dark driver after the next, one switch car after another, all night and all night and all night. But you never truly love it till you love its alleys too. Where bright and morning faces of all familiar friends. Now where the anxious midnight eyes of strangers a long way from home. The Nobodies from Nowhere, a complete portrait of Chicago, an ode to Gertrude Stein. You're so The Nobodies from Nowhere, Nowhere and Nowhere. The Nobodies Nobody Knows, The Nobodies from Nowhere and Nowhere, Where Where There, Nowhere. There are Nobodies Where, and the Nobodies Nobody Knows. And don't want to know, even though they're right over there. Where? Where are they there? Who are these nobodies? The nobodies nobody knows. The nobodies nobody knows. Though they are right over there, they go as the snow goes. They go where the wind blows.
the nameless, useless nobodies who sleep behind the taverns, who sleep beneath the L, who sleep in burnt out buses with the windows freshly curtained in winterized chicken coops or patched up truck bodies. The useless, helpless, nobodies, nobody knows. They go as the snow goes, where the wind blows, there and there and there, down any old cat and ash can alley at all, there, unloved and lost forever, lost and unloved for keeps in a day, there, far below the ceaseless flow of TV waves and FM waves, way, way down there, where no one has yet heard of phonovision, nor considered the wonders of Technicolor video, there, there below the miles and miles of low pressure cookers, there where they sleep in someone else's jail, there where they chop kindling for heat, cook over coal stoves, still burn kerosene for light, there where they sleep the all night movies through and wait for rain or peace or snow, there, there beats Chicago's heart. And all the stately halls of science, the newest Broadway hit, the endowed museums, the endowed opera, the endowed art galleries are not for their cold pavement colored eyes. For the masses who do the city's labor, keep the city's heart. And they think there's something fishy about someone giving them a museum for nothing and free admission on Saturday afternoons. They said somebody got a bargain and they are so right. The city's arts are built upon the uneasy conscience that milked the city of millions on the grain exchange, in traction and utilities and sausage stuffing, and then bought conscience ease with the minute fraction of the profits. A museum for a traction system, an opera building for a utilities empire. Therefore, the arts themselves here like the acres of Laredo Taft's deadly handiwork are largely statuary, mere monuments to the luckier brokers of the past, so the people shy away from these gifts. They're never quite sure why. This place remains a broker's portage and an old time way station for pimps as well, both professions requiring the same essential hope of something for nothing and as soft as goose feathers way to go. A portage too for the fabulous engines, the harvester, the sleeping car, and the Bessemer process. Yet never a harvest in sight hereabouts for humanity's spirit, uprooted over half the world and well deceived here at home. No room, no time, no breath for the Bessemer process of the heart.
directing this project. So this is an 